Look at this model, guys, all right? And now look at this one. For all of you in the comments of my Alpha 1 video saying that you hated the Alpha 1 dwarves, how the characters look funny, how the design looks funny, this is exactly what I mean when I say this is a Alpha. As we have seen in the latest live stream, Intrepid is and plans to continue to put a huge amount of effort as they go through the design passes and continue to tweak and listen to feedback from you, the community. The once gnome-like dwarves are now bulk and muscular as you tend to expect from dwarves, although for those of you who like the alpha dwarves, you now have the Nikuan dwarf, which represents that alpha one dwarf a bit more than the Dunir do. Before we get too far into this video though, if you enjoyed this content, please consider subscribing as only 5.7% of you watching these videos are actually subscribed. And I know a lot of you come back and rewatch the videos because I can also see that stat too. But anyways, back to the dwarves. Let's talk a bit about what we have here for a minute. Obviously, we still have a long ways to go. And what we saw here is not the final pass of the dwarves. It's not how they're gonna look completely, although it is a pretty polished looking dwarf right now, but we're gonna see character customization and all that thrown into it. But to me, this Dunir looks perfect. It is exactly how I like to see my dwarves as more similar to Lord of the Rings or WoW with these short muscular guys who just give you a vibe that they were built solid and they don't want to be messed with. And you will get even more of that once you have the full ability to customize this guy with Ash's extensive character creator that they plan on implementing into the final version of the game. Look at the absolute details in these guys. You can zoom right in and see the pores, the blemishes, and all of the very fine detail of a character that you normally wouldn't get in a video game, which makes him look extremely lifelike. And although the female dwarf itself is less complete than the male, but even just looking at this, the amount of detail that is in it already is amazing. Steven said in the live stream that they might make the body type of the female a bit more hairy, which honestly, I don't mind if it's a toggle, not something that's permanent on all females female dwarves as I don't think everybody would like that. I'm sure some people would, but I'm sure there's a lot of people who wouldn't and it would then diminish that race itself or the female dwarves and they'd probably get used a little bit less if people didn't have a toggle feature there. We also got to see the Nikuan dwarves for the first time as well outside of concept art who are these more tropical dwarves that tend to live in beaches. Again, they look more similar to the alpha one style of the dwarf that we saw and a little less hairy, which honestly makes a lot more sense given their background of living on beaches instead of the mountains. They want to live in this warm climate, not this frozen tundra mountain-esque climate. So, you know, they don't need all those beards and long hair and all of that. They're just relaxing on the beaches. You don't need a beard to keep you warm on the beach. They do stand apart from their Dunir brothers a lot and are very well done. And I think it gives quite a different variety to the dwarfs and kind of adds some variety to the races overall. The Kalar human also got an update on the past live stream, and these guys have come even further than the dwarf. As you look back from our Alpha Zero human, to our Ashes Apocalypse human, to Alpha One, and then the current one shown in the live stream, you basically have these four different human designs here. They look like they're from four completely different games almost, and each one shown with more and more detail. Although they are not as distinguishable from their counterparts of Veiloon as other races and sub races are, they are still both very well done. Diving into those orcs though, we've finally gotten our first look at the Renkai and the Vec. Other than some teases of the armored figures and cosmetic packs and some concept art, this is the first in-game model of these guys we've seen. The Renkai for me are going to take some getting used to. I honestly don't know quite why. I think these guys feel more like a giant to me than an orc. But once you throw in some character customization and allow me to change up the skin color to the confirmed red or green skin that they're allowing, and hopefully some tusk customization and all of that, they'll probably feel a bit more orc-like to me. And I don't mean this in a bad way at all. The detail again and the design is very well done, and the scales on the back are pretty cool and it's something a bit different that Intrepid is doing, giving their own take on these guys. These guys are meant to be the tallest races towering over their counterparts, and they're supposed to be pretty intimidating, which I think Intrepid has nailed. The Vec, though, I absolutely love the Vec, to the point where someone who has been set on playing a dwarf in every MMO possible, I am on the fence on jumping over to these guys. But we also haven't seen the Tolnar yet, so maybe I'll just be completely in love with the Tolnar. I do see a lot of comments on how they are more troll-slash-elf like which I can see 
Somebody said it looks like a WoW troll and a night elf had a baby. I mean, they got the ears and the tusks and all that. And they are very unique from what we have seen from orcs and what we've come to expect. But it's not a bad thing. They're a stargazer subspecies of orc. And I really can't wait to see the full in-game model of it. They're supposed to have a more hunched appearance like the trolls in Warcraft, which might throw it off a little bit more. But again, it's their own twist on it. And these are just a few of the customization options that are in store for us. At this point, we have seen all of the races except for the Tolnar, which I don't expect us to see for a long time. Probably more closer to the betas. And then the Pyre Elves, or Pyra Elves, I, Pyre, I don't know how to pronounce these guys. But I'm really hoping that these Elves stand apart from the Empyrean Elves as much as the Vex stand out from the Renkai. To me, the Alpha 1 Elves, which were Empyrean, didn't really feel any different to me than playing a human, especially once they're all armored up you couldn't really even tell they were an elf it was very hard to see a difference especially if another player is running towards you and you're like is that a human or an elf i can't really tell but if they get the same love the dunir did after alpha one then we should see some very unique races and hopefully two very distinguishable elves what are your thoughts on the races that we have seen so far in ashes of creation let me know in the comments down below which one is your favorite and if you are new to ashes and have yet to make an account yet feel free to use my referral link in the description below Otherwise, be sure to click that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up, turn on the bell for notifications, and stay tuned for a lot more to come.